this session, we'll be seeing how to simulate a second order differential equation in Simulink MATLAB. So we'll consider a second order differential, e differential equation as shown and we'll convert notationally to y double dash and we'll intend to find y double dash in terms of y and y dash. So let's frame y as x and y dash as x2. So we can term that as state model representation and then we'll have finally x1 dash equal to y dash or x2 and x2 dash equal to an expression of two things, like summation of two things. So we'll be requiring some gains and two integrators. So let's see how to assemble them. We'll type in Simulink and in Simulink browser we'll start our new file. So we want minimum of two integrators because we have two first order differential equation right now. So we'll surf on to two gain and two integrators. First integrator and the second integrator. And we'll just rotate it using control R. And we'll just right click and drag it will have multiple copy and then we'll choose gain because we want x2 dash x2 dash as summation of two things so we'll require some block and we'll change it to rectangular frame let's say and we'll assign this sign which was minus and minus or we can write plus and plus also but we'll have to modify the gain there so we'll choose minus and minus and then we'll, we'll connect it using click Held, held holding the control and again the click to the next block. It will directly get connected. So we'll just connect it again to X1. We are assuming the output as X1. That is nothing but our Y. And in between term is X2. So we have just completed our differential equation diagram. It's it looks very simple as compared to our first order differential e equation expression we had. So let's again save this file. Let's name it model underscore trial and save it. And then we'll configure the parameter right now. But before that, we have to assign that coefficients as well. So let's again revisit our differential equation. So if we see the diagram, it is x2 and we are assuming this to be as x2 dot or x2 dash. And this is an x2 is nothing but our x1 dash. And if you integrate it, we'll have x1. And you new when you double click on the connecting links, it will directly pop up. And this value, we know the coefficient. Let's revisit that equation again. So with x1, we have coefficient 3 by 5. And with x2, we have 6 by 5. We'll double click that gain block and we'll adjust it to 6 by 5 there. So we'll write that function uh, 6 by 5 and same goes with this as well, like 3 by 5. There we go. So we are assuming zero initial conditions. So if we see the differential equation, it is simple. So if we put dx by dt as zero, so we have answer like both state tends to zero. So finally, if we run it, we'll have steady state value as zero because this differential equation have that in steady state value as zero, it seems. So let's configure the parameters. So we'll be choosing fixed step and ODE1, that is Euler method. And we'll use a step size, let's say again, 0 0.001 and then single tasking and apply and we'll, for time being we'll just change the stop time to let's say 5 seconds and there we go 
so we have five seconds there and we'll again save it and we'll simulate it so the expected answer is zero because this system is will be having its steady state value settling to zero it is depicted directly by by the differential equation if we see at the bottom of screen so let's try inserting some initial value if it is having some disturbance or perturbation we say so it should exhibit some dynamics so let's try in making that initial value different and when we execute it we can see the like solution so we haven't set our x axis that is time axis so let's remove that limit of 5000 which we have discussed already so we'll just remove that limit okay and then again simulate it so it will it behaves of course the solution behaves dynamically like from different initial condition it depicts a nature a trajectory and then settles to zero of course it will settle to zero but by having some dynamic trajectory so let's try to record x2 state as well this this is the final solution like we are saying for y but we have imparted state model so we have in between our intermediate state as well which is x2 so let's trace its behavior as well and when we execute it both impart differential or both impart dynamic nature so we can see we can verify what what is the initial value so x1 initial value is 0 and x2 initial value is 1 so let's change x1 initial value and we'll verify whether our system is solution is okay or not there we go so we are having initial values of 0.5 there in x1 and same goes with the x2 also so by changing the dynam the way parameters we will we can change the differential equation so that's a general idea of how to solve an ordinary differential equation in simulink